What's up guys? This is the Rifeman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War Let's Play as the Kingdom of Mysore. So to pick up where we left off, we well, had attempted to try and engage the uh, Persians in one large battle, but it appears only we can only really attack these two uh, small forces here. So we're going to take them on, and my hope would be that either we, we can engage that stack next turn, or we can, or they fall back, or we can try and send an army up to Kashmir to defeat the Mughal Empire once and for all, and secure overall territorial control of Indian territory, and then we could fortify our front line against Persia while we boost our empire. My gun's going to be up over the hill. Uh, oh, actually, first of all, so, Sikh troops. Kizilbashi troops. Hindu troops. Sadly, we don't have any equal rank units. So these are Hindu musketeers. They look pretty good. They, they do look pretty good. These are Kizilbashi musketeers, but they can't form square, which is, for me, is really quite significant. It kind of makes them good garrison troops, but not necessarily battlefield troops. And then you've got Sikh musketeers, who look pretty cool. They can form square, and they are actually the best troops I think you can get for the Indian faction. Obviously, there aren't guard units. So, 35, 25, 15. Yeah, so a, a raw Sikh musketeer unit outshoots a experience level 2 Kizilbashi musketeer unit by some way, actually. What about an, an ex experienced Indian musketeer unit? Is 28, 28, 15. So my, these Hindu Musketeers reload faster, but they're just much less accurate. Yeah, I believe that's the general trend, though. It's Hindu Musketeer, Kizilbashi, Sikh Musketeers are generally the accepted order of capability. This is my first outing for Sikh Musketeers. And I expect them to be good, because they do actually do quite well for the AI. We're going to form two melee divisions on either flank to push up like cavalry. Bowmen are a bit of a loose end. There we go. Then cavalry on either flank. Generals don't get enough use so we can try and use them a bit more. Enemy reinforcements coming in slightly off axis. Trend on my guns up the hill. We're not. There isn't a. Quite sure why you guys are running or walking. You should all be running. This is okay. Quick form up. The oh, they like regular as clog where they, they can they pick the one unit in the line that doesn't form square, so they go for it. So if you were being intelligent, you'd probably want to back these guys up with melee troops to counter charge. Hindu warriors, get in here to counter charge the dervishes. The Sikhs can get out of square and attack themselves because these are Sikh musketeer units, aren't slouches in combat. There we go, Kizilbashi retreat to the square. Now the camels have hit my square formations, so they should go down quite nicely. Hindu warriors are in. Hindus and Sikhs fighting alongside one another. Then the Hindu warriors are going to push through this line. As are the Sikh warriors. You men reform square, because the cavalry are coming in. Sikh warriors 
they look like the musket similar to the musketeers but with buck buckler shields and swords naturally for a good old bit of slashing but you men charge them in the flank horsemen are look, look like they're going to rout any minute now Okay, my musketeers warm up against the enemy reinforcements. Push through. So let's get my melee troops up here. You can't ever really trust where the computer puts them. If you're going to line people up, you may as well do it manually. You know, easy, ungroup, group. Or ungroup, deploy, group them up again. Yeah, you men, including melee troops, also form up in the line. Even though you're not shooting, guys, you're still doing good work. Is. Did do a single bit of damage. I mean, I'm sure you had an idea of what you wanted to do. Why did you pick. Why did you decide to do that? Push the flanks of the enemy position. Now these Indian troops are going to be able to... F we're going to be able to fire by rank into their troop concentration. It's only a unit of Afghan hillmen. Send my camel nomads forward to take out the guns. Push my cavalry forward. These Kizobashi musketeer units. Push into the dervishes. The dervishes are trying to chase down my camels. Let's get my general to have at them with their muskets. Bringing up melee troops to back him up anyway. Yeah, if you're not going to shoot at him, engage him in melee combat like my hordes of troops. Charge the rear of the hillmen. Most of these units are just going to be... Well, these dervish units are done for. It's a bit of a messy one, actually, this size. So you've got too many units to make use of. Oh well. Just to end it there. It's pr it'd probably be better off if we were fighting a large army. 132 men remaining. They might both die. Nope, sadly not. So you're in position. Build up your strength. Push you guys up as well to be within range. I've been a bit slow and steady because uh, that's what I think works. So can I move you back to Colombo? Ooh, minus four. Who to leave behind? Minus two. Minus two and exempt them from tax. Because, well, my main thinking is that defending Ceylon is absolutely valuable, but 
but my strength, well, based on the AI's behaviour, Ceylon is one territory. Here I have either Goa, Mysore or Arkat that they wish to attack. I'm going to get 11,000 next turn, which isn't even enough to buy for a fortification unit in for set of fortifications in one turn. So I need to keep the bulk of my troops nearby. I'm hoping that you guys can keep Arkot secured. We have a small navy, but not necessarily a good navy. That, it's so... Really, if you've got a good navy, you can just patrol the length of this box and check there's no one here now. But there's nothing to stop them next turn from getting here than coming straight over. That's the, that's the challenge, I think. As it is, take it steady. Keep our research going. You're going to get flintlock cannon, then you're probably going to go for... Ooh. Basic steam pump. Okay, you should probably go for that, because we've actually got some other industrial buildings that aren't just weavers' cottages. <laughs> yeah, that, like, that. That's definitely coming our way. Yeah, as long as the Ottomans and as long as they're all still at war. But yeah, I'm after the carnage of the first ten or eleven episodes. I'm after some slower time to uh, to build up my empire because I haven't got any ex existential threats. I've got frustrating little poke and prodding threats, but nothing that's going to actually ruin my kingdom okay so what i'm probably gonna do is send an army north to take shrinigar then an army to attack that main force that's on our side of the river because once i do that i can move well, once i've taken shrinigar i can cover all three access points that the enemy, the enemy have to cross into northwest india and i can just build up a front line and make a move Do you want can you get can you handle the next level college? Not really. Large level large amount of clamour for a form. Probably not upgrade you to a tavern to upgrade you to a next level university. Six thousand to so you, chaps. Okay, you're probably going to go for... Let's go for a bit of an upgrade. Let's go for a couple of Sikh units here. Sikh musketeers? Anywhere? Royal Indian Infantry Guards. That'll do. Okay. They have 4,000... We need to get measuring tools. That's another important thing we need to get. So let's go for a craft workshop here. Let's go for... First of all, lists. Regions. Most valuable regions. Karnataka. You need to lose your military governor's barracks. And replace it with a civilian administration building. Because... Nagpur, we can build up into a military governor's encampment to ensure we can still recruit Hindu musketeers. And I know you might say, why do you want to recruit Hindu musketeers? Because I want the full spectrum of things I can recruit, and I can't build them in towns when I upgrade them. I know, it's because Obashi or Sikh musketeers are nothing. Actually, I don't... Uh, I, I do, so I do want to do that, for sure. Just don't necessarily want to spend the money on it just yet. Because lots of these areas are madrasas trying to get rid of uh, clamour for a form. Cotton weaver's cottage is probably a good idea, but actually I probably want to upgrade something like a Madnagar's civilian building. Okay, first of all, lists. Bengal's got the Subadar's palace. Maybe go farms? 
to be honest, I don't know. Range by income. Bishapur. Maharaja's palace has been built. My source got the Raja's palace, but not the Maharaja's palace. Akbarabad's got the Maharaja's palace. Okay, right. I've got a lot of government buildings I can build. Hmm. Should we start grading the madrasa? Increases happiness for the in for the Muslim population. Potential stuff to export to the north. I think I might just go for this craft workshop. I'm I'm overcomplicating things. Your Majesty. Yes, sir. So of the two. Yours is probably the army I want to reinforce and well actually maybe we just just siege Srinagar for now. Deplete them. You guys have dug in. If you guys push, we will attack you, or we will defeat you. But you are choking off supplies of reinforcements from Kabul. They have to take this northern route rather than the first route. But there's a crossing here to worry about. In terms of tech. Okay, so you got flintlock cannon. So Patna, get on with basic steam pump. It gives, a, gives us a flat boost to wealth generated by mines and reduces the cost of metalworking buildings and it gives us some, some next level mines and we have a couple of mines we can build we do have a couple of mines i don't mind europe as long as europe mines its own business and leaves us alone i don't mind pushing through persia and gaining another a new front line with the Ottomans. Ultimately, I don't necessarily want to land in Western Europe at all. Personally, I want to just. I don't mind invading. Um, I don't mind invading the Americas by sea, but I like the idea of India just pushing through Persia into the Middle East, going along North Africa, up through Europe, up through Russia. You know that proper. Um, so like that, the, it, I mean, this is not based in history or facts, it's just kind of what's going on in my head. The whole idea of what the Austrians and Polish in the 17th century, 16th century, thought they were doing to the Ottoman Empire, that there was a Islamic um, pressure into Europe that they wanted to, def to defend against. I want to kind of emulate that. Yes, your Sikh musketeers are all the way up. Sikh warriors are all the way up here. But bring them down. Let's upgrade these two ports, because ports are very good money earners. 6,000. Probably upgrade you to a weaver's cottage. Ooh, we've already gone through this. Subadar's palace at Hyderabad. That's worth buying or yeah, don't have enough to upgrade the one in my own capital tavern just makes people happy but everyone's already fairly happy although i might want to upgrade it just so when the when the uh, garrison leaves they don't rebel quite so easily then we're rebuilding the government building here in karnataka good You guys aren't fully replenished, but you're as replenished as you're going to be. Let's go take out this Persian stack here and secure the northern edge of this river crossing. Squeeze them back, then we can just fortify, spend money in our economy and get everything firing on all cylinders. So the enemy have a significant contingent of dervishes. So what makes sense is to form a defensive line, allow them to approach us. We shoot the crap out of them. 
while at the same time move up my flanks ready to envelop. I might deploy all my guns in one major in one large battery rather than spreading them out it makes it a bit easier to organize good so that's all my shooters deployed deploy melee troops kind of on the flank Where's my Kizzlebashi Musketeer unit? Let's put a Pike unit directly behind them. Bowmen are going to provide some protection to the guns. New men form up here. Camels on the left. Well, yeah, more camels on the left. Guns are going to engage their guns. But there's our dug in, so it's a bit of a waste of time. Ah, to hell with it. To hell with defensiveness. Allons-y. Coming to get you. Coming to get you. So then it's these guys, group six. Yeah, they got dervishes. We got better melee troops. Because compare a... Do I have a stock dervish? No, I don't. Only level two. But level two compared to his level two Islamic swordsman. 13, 10, 8, 16. 16, 10, 20, 11. So obviously they get... Islamic Swordsmen get a big defense boost from having that shield, but their morale is less. But they should it should be more difficult to route a Islamic Swordsman unit because they take less damage. Compare that to a Sikh Musketeer unit, though, it looks like you're actually kind of in the middle. Not necessarily as much attack as a. Well, actually, that's a level one Sikh Warrior unit as well. A bit less defense somehow, even though they look like they're definitely more armored, but okay. But they are the better shooters. Run my melee troops on the left, because their camels are going to commit against commit against my camels. Retarget my guns into the centre. They fired off a volley. Squeeze my line forward, just so they don't shoot into that combat. My melee troops have it well in hand. Fight a volley into those camel nomads. Charge my camels up. Okay, everyone run because they are they've committed to the action well they did do it looks like they were advance at speed get these melee troops back Come on, don't you fancy getting into a bit of trouble? Commit into the fight.
There we go. Cavalry. Engage their cavalry. Their morale is already breaking. You men charge the dervishes. You guys cease fire. Ah, camels, eh? Pike unit, get them over here on the flank. Commit those men into the fight. There we go. So we've broken one dervish unit. Seek warriors keep pushing. New men charge into the fight here. So these guys can continue to advance. See, if you guys want to get in got it wanna get in on the want to get in on the melee fight, you need better guys. Charge up the hill with most of my troops. Charge these Hindu musketeers into the rear of these dervishes. It's a large concentration of enemy troops over here. You men charge them, you men charge the musketeers, you men charge the guns, you men charge into the rear of the dervishes. I want my pikes to get even further around. But yeah, so even dervishes that have good morale route really quite quickly because they take a lot of damage, they take more damage very quickly. Oh, get my guns to cease fire. Don't get suckered in and fighting the gunners. There we go. These guys think they're all it with their hatchets and stuff. When really, it's all about the guys with pointy sticks. Ah, that's part of the reason why they fought so viciously. It's because they... They had their general here amongst them. But oh, they've been well and truly engulfed by our melee swarm amoeba. If that's even... If that's even the right word, autophage or whatever. But there we go, Abdullah Minavind has been... And his force wiped out. And the new men... Get here. Rebuild. Awesome. So that's two of the crossings secured. Got some backup troops here at Lahore. Who could, who should really be used to filter fresh troops to the front. Or at the very least, just to just to refresh the most depleted units. Most of you guys aren't actually that bad. Okay, good. What, I'm, what might be worth trying is major nations Persia. Oh, they're a minor nation, I see. See, we're only unfriendly. Peace, Persia. So an agreement is reached. It is reached. We are good Islamic peoples. You demand military access? No, but I will offer you my entire treasury. Ten turns. Nope. Nope. Very well. Then neither of us will make money. Apart from that, things are going quite nicely and we will probably be sallied at Srinagar before long. But until that happens, I am content to have uh, attrition work its magic. Yeah, there come the Dutch. Ha! <laughs> They've landed right off the coast. So this is the advantage of not having a secure port. It gives us a turn to respond to them. They can't just stream in and take something significant. We have a turn to get our stuff together and work out a plan of action before 
the AI can do what it wants to do. But I take great comfort in the fact that it's a half strength, already depleted stack anyway. Looks like the uh, Louisianans are still clearing out pirate garrisons, which is good stuff. You men can withdraw. The Mughals did not sally that turn. Very well, we shall continue sallying. We do not necessarily need that army right now, so we can afford to wait. So when I get seven grand, I want to build a, build a top tier uh, in uh, government building in Mysore. Come on, let me have a go. 13,000. Sweet. Construction report. Water, water power, cotton mill, a tavern, and two large tea plantations. Good stuff. So, what are you? A, a pretty unlucky general. Were I to summarise your position. 6,000 to a Maharaja's palace. These mines will provide some unhappiness from industrialization, but in general, other good stuff. It will be worth upgrading them. Plus the farms. Farms are a cheap upgrade, which I shouldn't really forget as easily as I do, but I still do. You guys came back down to Mysore. But I do not think we will need them. Oh, for God's sake. Still going to fight them, just so we can try and make sure we do as much damage as possible. We are not going to be fools and let them off the hook that easily. In the grand scheme, I would like to fortify Mysore, Karnataka and Goa with fairly large armies. I've got a bugged artillery unit with a huge gun crew, fundamentally. We are not going to change our strategy. We're going to bombard from max range. I don't, my line is very, very uneven, but that's okay. It's because I've got general, I've got um, Royal Indian Infantry Guard units deployed. But we're just going to advance and try and swarm them. We'll try and swarm them. Gee, I wonder if we can swarm them. I wonder if we've got the numbers. Probably going to speed this up a little bit. Hey... Counter charge. Ah! Charge me as much as you like, good sirs. Counter charge, Pikeman. You may do some damage to us, but my guys haven't even. Camels, do something. Yeah, they are not in a good place. Go on, General, cut them off. Otherwise, swarm, 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 attack pattern alpha. Deploy the cavalry. Who says my strategies lack style or finesse? Mm. 
You men are going to go straight through to get their general. You men are going to go straight for the 2nd, 29th regiment. You men are going to keep going for this militia. My gunner is just going to stop firing. You can't even form a square because there's so many infantry around. So this is those moments where I'm sat there going, oh no, how am I ever supposed to defeat this? And it's like, you don't. Spoiler alert. Camels. Pursue everyone who isn't a camel. Get the general's bodyguard. Does he just take out that last guy? One militiaman, one poor unlucky sod who's hiding back here. Islamic swordsmen have made the charge and connected. Hello, General. There's pikemen in here. You can see their sticks. I mean, it's pretty safe to say that the commander that was sent with this force definitely didn't get on with his superiors in Amsterdam. Because, yeah, the commander's gone. There are not very many men left in his charge. Well, the, ch the charge of his staff. Buccaneers have fled as soon as they expose themselves. But make sure we knock out their infantry to the best of our ability. Just so they don't come back. That's the general's bodyguard over there, but he booked it to safety. The buccaneers lost one unit, one man, and that was enough to make them go nope, nope, nope. Close victory, yeah, real close. Good job we didn't do anything. 200 men remaining. Does mean they're going to still be free to run around. Even if I remove my guns, it doesn't do anything. So let's see if, on the immediately after we beat them, if I can make peace. Nope. So they are going to... Let's cancel that tea plantation, because they are going to break it. And then let's take... Well, let's not take anything, actually. Let's just keep recruiting. We can't stop them from running around and raiding things. They're probably, For example, they're probably going to raid the port. That sloop's probably going to then get attacked by their fleet. Very well, I will just spend that extra money, you... Extra money we didn't lose to you on replenishing this army plus 4,000 I mean yeah you're still well, it's, the, it's, the, it's the foreign occupation that you don't like so great this mine is also a mine over here two mines over here average and low get the average one Good, 576. That's not enough to do anything else. And they might even take Goa because you don't get much of a garrison in Goa. Depends how badly those guys are beaten up. Okay, so Pana's got basic steam pump and instead of going for coke blast furnace, they're going to go for measuring tools. The Raral Pindi could do with being replenished. See, now we've made peace with the Persians, if we take Srinagar, they will teleport back to their side of the map. Well, they'll teleport over here. So I guess this is a bit of no man's land up here. Replenish as much as you can. Our tech's good. Let's hit end turn. We are going to rebuild that university, and again, it's probably going to... Uh, even, I'm just going to water resolve it. <laughs> I was going to say, 
could have fought it myself, but even if they took it, it doesn't really matter. Their army's so small. But yeah, this is part of the reason why I do want metal roads. It's because it would make it easier for me to chase down and destroy these armies after they've been defeated. I mean, it could be the Ottomans getting ready to attack me. They're building up an army in the port. But you'd think, after they've lost Istanbul to, per to Prussia, they'd be more interested in fighting them, but whatever. But effectively, I'd like to build a little garrison at Calcutta, because Calcutta's quite valuable to hold. Well, to be honest, I need to be making a lot more money than I already am to act out all the dreams I want to have. The Mughals have resisted the temptation to sally out again, which is not a problem. It's absolutely fine, Mughal Empire. I think I know what I would like to do is slowly start to build up another army to do some colonial work. A few champs can fully replenish and just stay here. Those are two troops we built to help garrison Mysore. Could, could build barricades, but I think we're okay in the grand scheme. Um, so upgrade the mine over here and the iron workshops. Let's replenish this university, rebuild this university. That could cause lots of upset, so let's immediately set upon repairing some of Mysore's things, or Lahore's things. Upgrade the roads, upgrade the... M not the mine yet. Get these farms upgraded because they're just solid passive income. You're positive five, so you're not immediately needing money spent to keep you guys happy. Let's go for another farm. Two trade routes raided, not a problem. Lots of good industrial buildings built. Oh, I should have. Right, where's my where's that farm I was just building? keep boosting that tax income from our cart. That's going to really drive that number up. Oops. Apologies for that. Again, two monitors clicked on the wrong side. Clicked too far over. Um, but apart from that, everything's going okay. One more turn to get reorganised procurement before we get army council. Let's get to Sepahi. And war elephants, which I really want. I do need to keep max, keep driving up my artillery upgrades as well. But again, like I said, we've got so so many things I want to do. One thing I want to do, for example, is take this force here, replenish them, bring them down. Maybe not even necessarily down to Mysore, maybe to here. And use these as a bit of a core of the army that's going to go to the Americas. Probably attack Havana, take that back from the Dutch. And it sucks we had to give away these two territories to the Ottomans. But whatever. Well, no, I think we only gave away one. I think it was only one. Yeah, okay. So we are repairing the school. I'm going to preemptively give it joint stock companies to research, although, yeah, that'll do, actually. We will likely see the Mughals uh, sally this turn, and it will be a decisive battle, at least this way we know when we win, the city's ours, and it definitely looks like the Ottomans are going to be building up their armies to attack us, so I'm probably going to want to move my rake back to the turret. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> Disregard. You wouldn't want me in charge of nuclear weapons, I'll tell you that. As soon as they start to twitch, I'm there going, ah, launch the bombers. Launch the bombers. We can't get caught on the ground. Oh, it's fine. They were just moving some bits. Whew. Yep, Sweden. Sweden's been Sweden. Go 
on Moogle Empire. Well, I think it's this turn. It might be next turn that uh, Srinagar runs out of the ability to withstand our siege. Sending agents towards us. Here they come. A bit of attrition, not a huge amount, but I'll take some over none. Let's do it. Once Srinagar is secured, and that also means we can recruit Gurkhas, and I love Gurkhas. I love them, they're great units, they're real fun to use. So I would very much like to own the territory that they're in. Come on, come on, come on! Fight to secure the hill, it looks like. So form a gun line, advance cautiously, roll up our guns. I missed one unit. There we go. So advance up our gun line, keep my melee troops behind the line ready to counter charge all of their melee troops We've got a lot of cavalry we can use on the flanks my general's also going to get a bit of a workout be a bit cautious in my initial push. Oh, I forgot they had mortars. But yeah, still be cautious. We can see that they are using explosive shot, which is just not very good. Gurkhas, Gurkhas. Gurkhas in the middle. Gurkhas on the flank. Gurkhas, Gurkhas, Gurkhas. A lot of Gurkhas on the right flank. Maybe bring a Pike unit over to support there. This Gurkha unit is going to get a lot of musket fire. They're charging, but they can't work out the pathfinding. Second volley. Islamic Swordsman, counter charge. My cavalry, my Zimindari cavalry can. maintain. You, can, you charge the armed populace first. My general's bodyguard counter charge the camels that have charged in. So now you men. Push after the Gurkhas. That's a Dervish unit routing. Charge them down. Still a Gurkha unit on the flank, but I'm hoping I can push a cavalry unit into them to even the odds there. Push them on. There's still a Gurkha unit out there on the flank, on the left too. But it would appear as though having my infantry behind the lines to counter charge has worked perfectly. It's a mass enemy route. Oh, look at that. Sorry, Gurkhas, you must not have enjoyed that very much. Charge the mercenaries. Not all of you, but uh, some of you. Does that make swordsman and dervishes push? Because you've got a Gurkha unit over there that wants to have some good times. You get over here and help your brothers here.
charge. I want war elephants, damn it. So you've charged Gurkhas, more men are joining that action there. So you unit these units are both musket units, they can advance up against the general. So you seek musketeers. These are this is a little a core um This is a serious little block of troops there. They don't mess around, but they are increasingly surrounded and they're engaging my Islamic swordsmen, and my Hindu musketeers, and my cavalry's charging in. Yeah, there we go, that broke them all right. And they've been slaughtered. You men just mass charge the garrison muskymen. There's no... No concern about whether or not your range units or whatever. Let's bring my cavalry back to help pin down the general's bodyguard. They are in range of my infantry and they should be being engaged. Well, once they've reloaded, my guns that have been completely absent this entire game advance to help us deal with the elephants. Come on, Kizilbashi. Someone else is doing all the hard work and sucking up all the hit points. You in position for the Gurkhas that are about to come back. To be honest, all of you form a giant lion and be like, right, Gurkhas, who do you want? Skirmish the cavalry with my Zimandari horsemen. Because then once the general's down, he can be pursued and destroyed very, very efficiently. Because we all know, don't we? What's faster, a horse or an elephant? And I'm sure elephants are a lot faster than we give them credit for, but they're not faster than horses. You guys are wavering, what for? They must be being fired upon from the general's bodyguard. Those Gurkhas are wavering, trying to get to our front line, and they broke. There goes the general's bodyguard. Not that we need to kill them, because this is a city fight, and we have taken the city. So we're just going to end it, because there's no... F this <laughs> Why carry on? The Mughal Empire finally is destroyed. Well, I hope it's destroyed. Well, I'm going to just take it next turn anyway. But finally, that foe that's been dogging our steps this entire campaign has, dealt, has been dealt with, and now we have none of our original enemy enemies uh, to deal with. The Marathas and the Mughals are done for. There is only one India. And it is ours. Well, obviously I've just got to do this because look at that. Chomp. There is only one India. And it is a Mysore in India. There we go. They've been pushed back because this becomes my territory. You're already Islamic, so we're going to build a craft workshop and just get some upgrades going here in the north and upgrade the roads. Punjab is getting new roads. Mysore. Port upgrades. Good. Thraka's mansion. Okay, I'm going to really lean on trying to upgrade our export capacity more than anything. I bet. Can you guys leave immediately? Probably not. Minus three. No. Fair enough. But this is quite this is quite a significant turning point now. Rural Pindi. So how has that impacted your public order? It, it's still a thing. It is still a thing. Okay, so...
You've still got religious unrest. So have you. So have you. Uh, maybe it might be best up here to just build you up as a madrasa for now. Because you can start to convert the remnants of this territory, but chiefly try and generate a priest. You can go to Lahore. Although, when's your next town? 15 turns, Multan. Mm. Can we deal with it 15 turns? Probably. With a bit of old garrison y garrison. Two Kizilbashi troops. Awesome! Now this is the time, folks. This is the time. We have no enemies in India. We can build up our economy, build up an army, start to expand our trade foothold in the Americas, build up a navy that will be able to control the Gulf, maybe build up a navy and start to go and do some raid some trade zones. It's all possible. It is all possible. But yeah, for now I want to just... I, well, what I'd probably do is upgrade the military shipyard of Pondicherry, but I do just want to keep driving up our, in, our economy. So we're making about... But then again, I always... I, I can spend whatever, almost whatever money I get given all the time. See, if they do, if they come for us, Persia is a war target for us. We will destroy them if that's what it takes. But I'm not going to overtly make an enemy of them if we don't have to. An imam in Hindustan. Okay then, so immediately you are going to revert back to being a craft workshop. My, a few mines have been upgraded, more plantations and more rice well, rice farms. They've got to max level, so that's them done permanently. Calcutta is not being limited by exports yet. Let's upgrade the port. Upgrade goods over here. Punjab has built, upgraded, or has improved their garrison then what we probably want is to start making smart and incremental upgrades to our production nearer the front line. Military Academy would be better. Fight with the Thracker's Mansion. We might, well maybe even this turn, be able to leave. Minus one. They'll complain. Then they'll get over it. And then you guys can get down here and cover this crossing. Let's bring you back to Nerun, just to have a better understanding of what the Ottomans are doing. Oh, this is going to be satisfying. So you don't go for cadenced marching, although it will that would actually help with our transit around the map. Yeah, you know what? Do cadenced marching. Because it's going to take you a few turns to get to the right part of the map. Okay. Oh, I didn't upgrade Palm Cherry like I should, like I said I would either. I was suckered in by economy upgrades. Aha! The British are coming. They're going to raid a farm. And then they're going to try and cross that great river. But we will hopefully have an army there soon to intercept. Don't worry, rest of the world. We will be magnanimous rulers. Yeah, now now we've got a bit of a boom period going. I'm feeling so relieved. Ooh, if the Ottomans took Esfahan, it would make the Ottomans our next great enemy, which is fine because we would be at war with them eventually, sooner or later. Anyway, Sweden's going to come after us. Whenever the AI moves troops onto ships, it's usually against the human player in 
on hard mode at least. At least that, that, that's the usual trend I find. You can spot when the AI, well, you do get used to spotting when the AI is doing things that are not in your interests long before they happen, because the AI just, whenever there's, whenever there's troops on a ship, assume they're coming at you somewhere in the next few turns. 22,000 this turn. Yeah, you'll, you'll cover it, because they can't cross anywhere else. They can raid this farmland. It's only Nicholas Farquharson with an army of militia. Such good upgrades, Srinagar. Ooh, actually, you got a bit grumpy-er. These two Kizobashi get up there and secure the territory. If that's not enough, we will exempt them from tax. No, not Royal Indian Infantry Guards. Pondicherry. Upgrade you to a dockyard. That will take three turns. But get a fifth rate set to build. Ceylon is there. Great, the governor's building. Ooh, can I do. Not yet. How long till roads? Next turn. Okay. Get some military upgrades just to keep the research flowing. Let's go for. More exports plus farm upgrades. Well, I'm just not so bothered about upgrading uh, madrasas just yet. But there we go. You guys get into Lahore. Start to convert the territory. Can I when can I recruit Gurkhas? I can recruit them off the bat. I can only have eight though. Faith reaffirmed. Awesome. This guy's even better at converting people in India. Okay, so potentially you guys could merge to form our first, or not our first, our first successful expeditionary fleet. And we're 22,000 a turn next turn because lots of our exports are finally being exported. So Patna's going to get measuring tools, then probably on to Coke Blast Furnace. String of Patna's going to get Cadence Marching. I'm not sure what you're probably going to do afterwards. Like that. Generally expect a British army to land coming to a shore near you soon. I mean, if they want to fight across a river, then that's fine. That's perfect for us. That's what we want to see. But next turn we're going to start finding our budget challenged again because we are going to be seeing well, almost all of my territories can benefit from having roads built. Yeah, they're getting embarked. Although they are going against Russia. Do what you like. I am not interested. If it's nothing to do with India, I don't care. And I'm probably going to make this episode be a bit longer because we're doing a bit of the, the admin empire building stuff. I mean, I like doing the empire building stuff. <laughs> but it's probably not necessarily as enjoyable to watch as the battles. 1,000 because you raided a farm. Form up. So if they push north, we'll intercept them unless they elect to go around us and probably raid this farm or this mine. Okay. Technology advances. I don't know why it's a camel emblem. Yeah, Kane's marching. Okay, right. So... You've gone to Coke Blast Furnace? Fine. Shringer Patna, don't go on to Diamond Formation. Probably go on to Longitude Watch. Because that will be more useful 
when we start to hop around the Americas. Some upgrade Nagpo to a military governor's barracks because I want to try and keep somewhere available for the production of um, Hindu musketeers because they're not, they're not necessarily good but they're not bad. Okay, that's a big, big chunk of spending done on economy stuff. One thing I didn't do, well, I did change my policies. I mean, if I drop them down to the lowest level, growth is going to explode. It's probably the best thing to do now to, to spur this boost. Enlightenment is going to be very useful. These technologies, the philosophical technologies. And I should probably have a different university researching. I know you were doing that. Rob Pindi. I probably want my best university to do these because they're so critical. There we go. Cool. I mean, I am intrigued to push. Or I'm intrigued to push across the continent. I really would like to know what's going on here, really, more so than I can currently see. But still, let's hit enter and keep things ticking along. Like I said, that British army with militia may well wander into range. Oh no, they've raided a mine again. That's fine. I'm not bothered. I like my territory east of the river. If they want to run around and break two buildings on the west bank, that's just fine. Is that going to be a Prussian fleet embarking, or Prussian army embarking on the fleet? Yes, it looks like it will be. Unless they fought rebels. It'd be hilarious if they do have rebels, although it looks like Holland may have... Well, I can't remember if Courland existed or not, but it's definitely not Russian or Prussian, so... That's an interesting opportunity. Okay, I think they've decided the Ottomans look like they are still interested in fighting war against us. Sweden is mobilising another army. Probably deploying them into Finland. Oh, don't keep them on ships. Deploy them. Get them deployed. Get them done. Okay, this turn, we're going to build up our expeditionary f force. It's going to be an expeditionary force, and it's going to be awesome. We're going to land, take some territories in the Americas, open up or expand our trade network to include other resources. Come on, Barbary States, stop being lame. I'm just ruining everyone's fun. Ah, oh, because someone's port got Prussia got blockaded. We lost we've lost all that trade money. And I've eased off policies a lot. <laughs> um okay, so you guys. Crew General Dilip Ak Ak Royal Indian Cavalry Guards. They look a lot like Sipahi to me. Native Lancers. Although those... Meh, yeah, okay, because we're fighting against colonials, we don't necessarily need tip-top quality stuff. We can make do with... I mean, some interesting stuff, but not necessarily waves of... Heavy cavalry. Okay, got three grand. Ooh, roads. So it begins. Road building. Okay, we're going to build, build up a lot of our tax base from that free-for-all I just gave. Uh, my entire population. Construction report. Lots of good construction.
Okay, yeah, it's important to know what's going on here. I suppose if, if nothing else, if they were going to declare war on me, they might build up troops in Nerun. But that's not necessarily good. Oh well, let's hit in turn. Or it might just be there to protect Basra from potential Persian attack, who knows. Yep, there's a full Prussian army. Blocking off the Aegean. I mean, well, so if we were playing on normal mode, because the Ottomans are, are our allies, they would have, ordinarily, have, it would have been very, very difficult, I think, for them to declare war on me, because in normal mode, the AI generally sticks by their word more than they currently do. When you're in hard, when you're playing on hard mode, anyway. When you're in hard mode, they they behave like the human player. When it's in their interests, they'll just tell you where to go. Good, they finally deposited their troops somewhere. You're welcome to steal my tech, Persia. I am not interested. There is no technology I have that you can get that will give you an edge because you have no edge. Pirates gonna pirate and be defeated. 15,000. Good. So it looks like trade with Prussia has opened up again. Look at all that tea. 377 chests. New town emerges. There we go. So let's get a craft workshop here. Good. Okay. Roads. We want to make the transfer of people and goods throughout our empire as easy as possible. And then we're at 2,400. Let's build a fourth race ship of the line. Some more good upgrades, government buildings, export um, buildings, naval dockyards. I'm getting so, so much stuff to trade. I've got a little bit of sugar. I wonder where the sugar came from. Because we don't own any territories in America. Those are gave them all away. Did I build... Hmm, curious. It must be somewhere up here. There it is. In Hindustan, they've got some sugar plantations to the north. And you could probably do with a bit of artillery. I mean, they're going to dig in in this mine until it's fully dismantled, and that's that's their prerogative. Yeah, I think this is going to be the last turn. I'm going to do some stuff and then end the episode, and then we can kick off in a period of relative peace and prosperity for our empire. <laughs> I hope that fleet just died immediately. The Ottomans have troops shuffling around, but we we don't have to worry about them. Well, maybe we do. A better navy would have been great to block off the Straits of Hormuz to prevent them from attacking us were was that to be their option but then again they could just sail past us and be like we're not going to invade you psych as they start landing troops off the coast of goa persia's moving their troops away more fool them because we are going to get them but i'm going to do it in a bit of a blitzkrieg up to esfahan and then potentially onward to baghdad but I need more troops for that. But I think what we're doing with our economy is the right thing. And especially once we start getting more advanced roads built, those are going to really just pump up our economy during phases like this. Well, 5,000 unless things like that happen, we lose trade with pressure again. 
Ooh, okay, right, so. We attack the nobles a little bit more because we are an absolute monarchy and we can stand it. Ooh, prosperous ports. Very, very good. But what have we got? New town emerges in Hyderabad. Is that necessarily better than upgrading a prosperous commercial port? Commercial ports boost region wealth as well. Hmm. Or do I just keep building roads? Think roads, craft workshop, and probably find a farm somewhere we can upgrade like that. Up to tenanted farms. Cool. Um, but yeah, looking at the timer, I think this is time to end the episode. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time for a bit of Sim City Total War. Um, <laughs> as we continue to beef up our empire. Like I said, once this army's ready to rock and roll, which won't actually be very long, we can then begin sending them over to the Americas and getting involved in some scraps. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed. Cheers, everyone.